ladies, gentlemen, and pronouns of all ages. Behind the Fiends proudly brings to you John Evans and Luke Martin, the world's worst show podcast. Recorded at a comic shop in front of a make-believe studio audience. This is Therapy Sessions with the World's Worst <laughs> Show podcast. I'm Dr. John. This is my assistant, Dr. Luke. Thank you for the introduction, Dr. John. I was waiting. <laughs> so would you kids come over here and just lay right here on this couch real quick and just tell me what you're feeling? Can I get off of it first, please? Okay, that's better. You comfortable? Need some water? I am, thank you. I... We got some fresh biscotti back there in the back with some tea. You know, maybe later. It'll dry out my mouth. Thank you. De nada. That's Spanish for you're welcome. Oh, I know. Thank you again. Thank you so much. That's what I'm here for. You. We, uh... We got some topics today. Dick pussy. <laughs> what is it? Where'd it come from? <laughs> Where's it going? Somehow that's become our slogan. Really? I use it so much at work now. Oh, no. Especially when I say that I'm going to punch somebody at work. I said, don't make me mad or I'm going to punch you in your dick pussy. It just sounds so good and spicy. It just rolls off my tongue. It's Elvira's birthday. Cassandra Peterson. How old are you now? I think she's 71. That's awesome. Like wine. Good Still job. Still gorgeous. Keep bathing in blood or whatever you're doing. This works for you. Good job. I was Elvira. reading around on the internet today and I never knew this, but supposedly she was in the old Ian Fleming uh, 1971 James Bond classic, Diamonds Are Forever with the late Sean Connery. Really? It was like a dancer in it. That was kind of like her foot in the door for Hollywood. She has some memoirs, right? Mm-hmm. Let's go check them out, man. I think she just come out, what, last year and told everybody she's been in a lesbian relationship for years, which completely for broke years. the hearts of goths everywhere. But, Everyone. Hey, yeah, probably. Everywhere. Yeah, pretty much everyone, because everybody's pretty much whacked off to the old I mean, let's be real here. It's safe to say it rained that day. <laughs> When the doves cry. But then everyone just loves Elvira so much they just kind of embraced it. It's like, all right. You know what? You sense. know what? Good for you, Elvira. Yeah, I'm glad you're it. happy. Who are you, boo? Supposedly she's been in That's this relationship awesome. for years. So, hey. Oh, what was your inter uh, interactions like with Sean Connery and shit? That's what I want to know. I guess I better read her memoir. Yeah. Which is never going to happen. So if anyone's ever read it. Yeah, supposedly he there's, he, he's got a little Thanks. sus pass there. A little bit. Sus. Still just a little bit. But speaking of which, when was the first time you were ever, inter when you were first introduced to Elvira? Uh, it was like that, like, late night creature feature kind of TV. Me too, public access. 100%. It's it was, like, oh my god. Um, it was, uh, what was it, like, Elvira's, uh, Mistress of the Dark, like, late night theater Chilling. or something. But, um. On a I sexy remember, couch. yeah, I remember growing up. Um, Channel Twelve, which was ABC back home, had a show that used to come on late nights, and it was for local television. It was called Red Eye Cinema, and I can't not for the life of me remember the dude. But all I remember is he had this big old Mario mustache, like your dad rocks, yeah. Captain Lou kind of and thing. And he had some curly hair, and he wore that little newsboy hat, and he was the one. He was the one that introduced me to trash movies, and it was from there that I, my love just, it just runneth over, the cup runneth over. But Elvira would come on after him, because they wanted, because it was the 80s, and they wanted to make sure the kiddos was bad, for, because God forbid they see cleavage, right? So, but I'm going to stay up, because I was faithful to Elvira. I was going to see some. Thank you for introducing me to Boobs Elvira. Yeah, 100%. Um, happy birthday, Elvira. But she was you. also cool, man. Every time you watched her, it was like you knew she was cool peeps to hang out with or something. She just She's come off be, as right? everybody that's ever been. Of course, now she runs con circuits a lot. But a lot of people talk about how just 
absolutely loving and just friendly she is. I honestly think people would probably understand if she wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> Those cons can be pretty rough. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure she's had her share of uh, purvays, pervs, that is. <laughs> but Guys like us. Yeah. Goddamn uh, gentlemen. Damn right. <laughs> I lay that jacket down in the mud puddles for you. Open yes. the door. I won't <laughs> say no to a hug, no. Especially a big booby hug. <laughs> where you press them up against me and make me happy. Uh, oh my god. John's heart grew three sizes that day. Hey, I wonder if anybody found that lost military jet. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, guys, listen. Um, Nothing says that our military is inept quite like we just lost a F-35 fighter jet. If you find a fighter jet laying around somewhere. Just throw a blanket over it. No, I don't know if you want to do that. Just fucking uh, just get away from it, huh? That's what I would do. Be like, oh, okay, it takes a picture of somebody. Just fucking run away. Well, the good thing about it is... Don't hang around. There is... There is cause for concern. So basically they had a mishap in the um, ejection system on it. It ejected the pilot. And the jet, for some reason, fell off the radar. I don't know how because those things have got all sorts of tracking devices on them. But somehow the Marine Corps lost it. <laughs> but Man. if you kids out there happen to find it in the woods... Uh, don't go fucking around with it. Yeah. Uh, there is some, uh, I can kill you shit on that. 100%. Um, <laughs> yeah, just, you know, listen to your old bell, John. Hey, get back in that tent. Oh, come here. You're well, just... normally when they just do little training flights, they don't have munitions on them. They don't have rockets and they don't carry, amp. but I don't know if they carry actual live rounds because they do have machine guns on them. Surprising, I'm sure they found it by now. Surely, I don't know. Surely, yeah, because that was back in uh, 18th of September. But North Charleston is that South Carolina? It would have to be South Carolina because that's where um, Charleston's where um, Paris Island is, the Marine Corps training station. Mm. Where you go to become the few, the proud, the <laughs> Marines. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. Y'all look super hot in fucking uh, dress blues, by the way. I always used to get jealous at those military balls. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because there we are in our little puke baby shit green suit, the army. Pairing yourself to other people, man. Then you I got know. the Navy with their little Popeye hat on and their fucking... People like their unis, man. I get it. Nah, I'm just saying, man, Marine Corps is tight. I steal that valor and I'm walking around with my Revolutionary War shit. Guarantee I will make some lady slug it up as I drag that cannon by. Ooh, me. who are you? <laughs> I'm Ulysses S. Grant. <laughs> you help me to scan in this heavy ass shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Here, does this make you hot as I load this musket? Uh. Let Look me. how I plunge this round in there. That's how I'm going <laughs> to plunge you. Let me twist up this mustache. <laughs> uh, I'm a real man. Pass me that sack over there, Papa Star. I get shot with this big old ball bearing. You got to cut my feet off with a shot of whiskey. Go help me out of these long johns. Buds are on the back. God damn, this shit's fucking hot. It's made out of pure wool. <laughs> Big old onesie. Why do they even make these? <laughs> fucking goddamn toddler. Goddamn jacket weighs 50 pounds. Jesus. It's wool. On wool. <laughs> on wool. With some brass ass buttons and shit. <laughs> Those motherfuckers. So now it's real to me. load, dude. They shot each other with bullets that were basically rocks. Yeah, and it was also the most stupid way to fight a war. Hey, everybody, let's just stand in this line <laughs> while these, in goddamn, the these goddamn cannons are aiming at us. <laughs> 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 
but but they can't stop us all. If we all get in many, many lines, they might mow us down for about 15 lines, but Something's, we'll still give it over. Something's got to give. It was just a war of attrition type thing. It's crazy, yeah. I'd be like, you can suck my I, dick. Yeah, I am bro. not standing up. <laughs> that fucking line. I'm going to lay on the ground, all right? Oh, well, wait. <laughs> Wait, Dang. General Grant, what's that over there? Oh, cannons? Fuck you. <laughs> I'll be back here in the back. Holy I'll shit. be stirring the beans. Man. <laughs> I'm sure they had those. But, I mean... Well, since? Obviously not. They stood yeah. in the line and got shot. <laughs> people still do that to a certain degree, though. And they do it because people told them to. You know that. It's just the way it is, man. <laughs> there's also... There's a, there's a lot of ways to persuade people to do My shit. almost 20-year career in the Army didn't require me to stand in the line thankfully, while somebody was pointing a gun at me. Thankfully. I think we kind of, yeah, we learned, maybe this doesn't work so good. Yeah, a little bit. There were some takeaways. Yeah. <laughs> wow, we're losing a lot of guys per battle. This can is heavy as shit. Are you going to suck my dick or what? <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> the cannon's what I call my dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa! Huh? Has other names. Blunderbuss. That one. That's a good one. It's actually a shotgun. It's like I've the early form of... End. It has like that trumpet horn at the end of it. Because <laughs> it was... They would shoot out a... Sh uh, basically, oh. that was a naval gun that they would use to clear decks. Just another brutal-ass shell. Yeah. Probably that tore your fucking guts out. Oh, my God. So that was real fighting back then. Swords shit. and guns. Some swashbuckling in your face shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> mm. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Come fly this drone. <laughs> Phew. Think Pro about it. If you're a sailor... And you had to fight like that, and no also one your like that no more. No, but back then, and your food was like covered in maggots, and you were drinking. I mean, I guess if everything goes down, everything goes down. And it's just like a fucking infantry kind of people running around, or militant groups kind of shit. We'll see. It's all probable. <laughs> I'm gonna start what's gonna be called the Care Bear Stare. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's gonna be like a group. We're just gonna stare at you real intently. I'm gonna start dressing up like uh, Daniel Day Lewis and uh, the last gangs. Mohican. Well, I was thinking more gangs in New York, oh. but I can mix the two together possibly. He was also uh, Abraham Lincoln as well, so oh, get that stovetop hat or that stovepipe hat. So poppy ones like a magician. <laughs> just put it on. Little little mm -hmm. white rabbit jumps out for so the much. kids. Care Bear Stare, huh? Yeah. Anybody call Grumpy Bear yet? Yeah, that's you, baby. Hell yeah. We'll put a little smiley cloud on your stomach. I need that. I was a little grumpy today. I'll put the rainbow on mine. I'll be Rainbow Sunshine Bear. These goddamn Mordor Warhammer bros better behave themselves tomorrow. <laughs> oh, tomorrow's their day. I thought that was Tuesdays. It's every day now. <laughs> I need their money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess. Sure. We'll say that. On record. What you do is you come in and you flip your chaos coin in the morning, which it always, for some reason, lands on chaos. Well, it did land on order the other day for you. It's going to be a new store soon. We should have a guest in here for our last episode. We should see if old Brandon and Susan would like to fucking join us. What if they follow you to Dang, the... Dang, you Yeah. That depth, that. They've probably... been good. They haven't bothered you. You're right. You guys have been pretty good. You get the place pretty decent. They Thank just, you. They just reach nothing it. weird. Nothing weird. No alarms in the middle of the night. They might be in here just fucking right now. We can't even see it. Just getting smashed against the table. That's awesome, guys. I hope so. <laughs> um, what if they're right in our face? <laughs> We're just sitting here like, well, we got chili over here all of a sudden. I, uh, cold spot on my nuts. Yeah. Brandon, is that you? <laughs> Susan? <laughs> One of you? Both of you? <laughs> You're hitting the spot. Next episode, we'll have Brandon and Susan on, everybody. We'll do some EVPs, ask them some questions, and, uh... See what they think about life. Yeah. And the hereafter. Yeah. Other than that, eventually, uh... You guys will join us on Rumble. 
on a regular basis. It's the new thing. So I, uh, John loves it. I put a, I started a Rumble channel for Behind the Fiends, and that's where we'll also have the podcast over there. Gaming, no. Um, gaming, they're restricted. They're, they're, you're only allowed to um, upload a 15 gig file. Okay. So I can't do any gaming over there because all my gaming uh, videos are normally more than 15 gigs because yeah. I do it in 2K. But resolution. Still some good content over on Rumble, right? Yeah. Um, so for those that don't are not, are not aware of Rumble, um, Rumble's kind of like an alternative to YouTube. And what it basically is, is it's what YouTube used to be, oh. where it's just a bunch of random creators just creating whatever. Because here's what happened. We all love YouTube. You love YouTube. I love YouTube. We all love YouTube. I don't love it, but I consume it. It's like TV now. We all use it, right? Well, here's what YouTube does. I don't love you at all, YouTube. YouTube is always going to push the influencers and the creators they want to push. And what I mean by that is... Exactly. It's a business. People like Mr. Beast, Markiplier, Dashy... Jacksepticeye, blase, blase, blase. If you were like mega, like, if you're um, like a Logan Paul or anything like that, they're going to push you because you're bringing in sponsorship money and you're bringing in more people to watch your shit. Oh. People like us, they Are will push us, me? but they won't push us like them. You should, guys. It's your loss. So on Rumble, our last podcast episode... I uploaded it to Rumble just to test the waters. Did good. It got 31 views in less than 24 hours. That's excellent. And that's on a new channel. When I first started YouTube, no, those are me. when I first, oh, sure. yeah, <laughs> you but, know what I mean. But when I first started YouTube, dude, I done well to get two goddamn views on something. And that's what I mean. Like I can't even account. Like oh, I will watch them. Give us a little bump. I haven't even checked out Rumble yet. I'm going to though. Get the fuck on there, man. Rumbles, I mean, Rumbles legit. It's like I said, it's like old school YouTube, the way I used to like it, where you shot it on a shitty camera and had shitty audio and all that. You but love there's that shit. But there's still people that <laughs> have good audio like us and good video like us. As long as I sit close to the mic. But there yes. is, there is that gorilla style filmmaking over there on Rumble that I appreciate. Like this dude that bought the Yoda puppet back in 2007 on YouTube and made a Yoda gets drunk video with electric light orchestra song in the background. And he was just going, fuck you, I'm drunk of Yoda. And all kinds of shit. And it was amazing. And I still go watch it today. Tourette's guy, complete shit videography. But you remember him. It does all, it, so far it does sound like shit. You sure? This is where we belong. I'm still going to rock YouTube. I'm just... It's called finding all the outlets you can to put our content hey, on. I'm ride or die with you regardless. So let's roll. We'll get the most out of it. And we are going to... We've been talking it forever. But I think it's the spooky season. And with that, I think we need to bring them ghost humpers. <sighs> Resurrection. You know, I'm feeling it. This is my last Halloween here, so we might as well make the most of this location. And me and Luke have talked about watching some movies for Halloween, so I'm thinking about just calling the whole thing, the playlist, the Halloween Hoot Nanny. I love that so much. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck a Hoot Nanny is, but it goes with Halloween. It's a good time is what it is. Um... <laughs> If you've never seen Ghost Huffers, it was just a sh- bunch of shitty videos. Hey, you know they've never seen Ghost Huffers. But it's in a playlist. I tried to clean them up about two years ago and put them back on YouTube. What it was is I had an old app. <clears throat> Those party apps for like finding ghosts like a EVP and Night Vision. And me and Luke was using it. And so I took the footage from it and I just made a complete story out of it that Luke went to his place called the Dance Dimension with an old rapper, uh, not rapper, but break dancer from the 80s named Tony Turbo when he possessed Luke and uh, all this other shit. And then at the end, they left a cliffhanger where something happened to me, but you don't know what. 
So you need to resolve that. Yeah, that's been two years in the uh, hanging. God damn. It's been a two-year wait for the cliffhanger of what happened to John. Because I was driving home and saw Ooh. some spooky shit. Should we be more scandalous? What do you mean? Like, should we just start fights with people and start calling people out on, like, YouTube and shit? What are you saying, like, start celebrity beefs? Yeah. We can. Until someone pays us attention. So let's start, let's, let's start, let's, let's work low. We got to start with them C-level, uh... Who we got? Like, Who's C-level? I don't know, like a Jamie Farr from MASH or somebody. Who the fuck is that? He was that cross-dresser from MASH. Who's that? MASH, the show? Yeah, the fucking Korean War bullshit from the 70s and 80s. Did he, he's a YouTube guy? No, but... I want a YouTube beef. I need something to get some views. I'm thinking like an Eric Estrada from Chips. Does he have a YouTube channel? No. I need, I need to have like a little bit of a follow. So why do we go find a shit just over low-level YouTubers? We gotta, yeah, we gotta do some back and forth so we can maybe get some fans from them. You know what I'm saying? It's like a little <laughs> leech. We jump on them, talk shit to them, and then steal some people. So we're going to start it right now. Hey, some of you YouTubers out there, want to start shit, get hit? <laughs> step we're here up. for it. Step, step up. What I mean is let's grow together. <laughs> we can be but, friends, but let's, let's, let's put on the facade that we, that we don't like each other. God. I just want to see my face in the National Enquirer next Maybe. to Bat Boy. That'd be cool. They still make that? I think that magazine. Oh, no one knows what the fuck there, You can still about. buy t-shirts. Yeah. Creeperama. <laughs> it says, Bat Boy got me pregnant and shit Jeez. like that on it. <laughs> Happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> There's gotta be something. And then we just work our way up until we're like star guys with like, like Markiplier's and PewDiePie's and shit. And we're like super famous. <laughs> Yeah, because right it's now they're like, too famous. They got lawyers. I don't need no defamation I ain't case. Saying anything negative about you, I'm just acknowledging who you are. <laughs> I wouldn't dare say anything of the sort. Listen, I'm just gonna need about a hundred fans from your pool of fans. You know what I mean? Some good peeps, some commenty peeps. We're starting an army. Yeah, like leave a like with that view. Some of y'all are just viewing without liking. Come on, man. Throw me a like. What's uh -oh. happening? Oh. Uh -oh. We got some drug deals going on behind the shop. So there's about to be a throw down and a get down in the back. That's as long as no bullets come through. They must have crawled out of Narnia. I think so. Down there diving for my trash. Pokemon cards and shit. I've been seeing them. Have you caught one back there shitting in the box anymore? Not a while. I usually just leave it till the morning. I try to throw away like wet shit and stuff during the day. Most of it's. But Luke had an adventure one night, guys. He went to throw some trash out back and nailed this fucking homeless guy in the face. He's like, hey! he was in the fucking Narnia box just taking a dump. Imagine taking a shit, just having a bunch of trash poured all over you. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Could my life get any worse? <laughs> yeah. You're like... I'm shitting in a dumpster and this fucking jerk off throws bags of trash. Just that hourglass of life. <laughs> and piss bottles in my face. Chunker <laughs> bombs and equivalent <laughs> comic books <laughs> raining down on me as I'm pitching a loaf, laying along. And it was from there he made up his mind that suicide was the option. I'm pretty sure that's how that fucking movie with Will Smith started, right? <laughs> when he was like an insurance salesman or some shit. What was that movie called? I can't remember, but he kept trying to get... <laughs> Pursuit the, of Happiness. Where his key is. Yeah, it started with me. I was Dude, there that taking was a good shit. Movie. I was pouring trash all over him. Then I slapped the shit out of that bitch. And then he, he, he fucking went and got a good job. Pursuit happiness, guys. <laughs> it's based on true story. Luke Martin at it. <laughs> you too can find happiness. Just go shit in a green box and get some trash thrown on you. <laughs> Doors will open for you everywhere. You jump up and yell and get slapped. And from there, luck will follow. Yep. Slap that kid, too. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Why don't you be a sassy fool? I just gave your daddy <laughs> gave your daddy paper to wipe up. You scared me. <laughs> just, 
<laughs> Lost my voice. <laughs> Scared me. Made me lose my voice. <laughs> it's pursuit of happiness. The pursuit Luke, of happiness. Luke Martin cut. <laughs> What's next up for you? For what? Gaming channel. I'm still playing WrestleQuest and Bioshock Infinite. But I'm thinking about doing a Rumble. No, that's right, I can't. Because Rumble only allows 15 gigs. Fuck. Well, throw that idea out the window. I was going to play Doom for Rumble. But, you know, whatever. Well, YouTube. Yeah. But I don't want to get too many games going at one time. Then it'll just get me f fucking... Once I get close to the end of Bioshock Infinite, which I'm getting close to the end of, then I'll start Doom. But that's the next game. Doom. The, okay. The 2016 one. Never played it. No. All right. Watch Gavin play it, but I never played it. Well, let's get it. And I love Doom. I even thought about playing old school Doom, but I don't know if people would enjoy that. I don't know. You don't know who gives a shit. Do what you want. That's right. right. What you want. That's right. You tell me, Dr. Luke. That's right. Welcome back to the tent, everybody. <laughs> well, that concludes our session. Um, you can just put the rain stick and stuff in a little bucket by the door on the way out. <laughs> You can go back there in the back and get you a few biscottis, oh. some leftover tea, and oh. take, you might be able to take it home to the cats. I would love that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you we take care of yourself, John. We also got some extra tea bags in the back. Make sure you put the hot water in the cup first before you put the tea in because you'll scorch it. I'd like to drive home with them on my face. Yes. <laughs> tea bags are good for the circles under your eyes. Yes, yes. I, I wear it above my lip like my little Hitler mustache. And just drive and suck on it and go away home. Get that full effect of caffeine. Absolutely. Suck on it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Relaxes me, soothes me. Makes me feel at ease. Yeah. Um, I'll see you next week. Okay. Now this has been the World's Worst Show Podcast Therapy Session. It's been pretty bad. It's been your... <laughs> been your your in-house therapist yeah. dr john and dr luke oh i'm a doctor now that's fantastic so, thank you dr. yeah i named john. you that at the first of the episode you said assistant no i said assistant dr luke I, I go back and listen here's <laughs> the doctor part but thank you so much i appreciate the yeah. acknowledgement you're welcome <laughs> i'll get you that that little paper that you can mount up over the wall that says you're a doctor you just write on something for I'll put gynecologist. I love that. Plus, these are my specialty. I want one that says volunteer fire department, firefighter. Uh, Tattoo assistant. And proctologist. That sounds fun. I'll go with, uh... If you don't know what that is, that's an asshole doctor. I'll go with... I think a proctologist. What is a proctologist? A proctologist, asshole doctor. Yeah. Oh. Proctologist. Yeah. I thought it was anologist. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Yeah. Gotta give it that proper name. You're sticking your fingers in people's assholes. Anusologist. Yes. I'm gonna go pee. I'm gonna go watch it. Goodbye, John. This has been John and Luke. We'll see you again next time.